Thank you. In the beginning of this comic book sequel, we learned that the hero we've grown to love in the previous three films wasn't always a hero. The hero used to be an a-hole. Don't hold it against the main character because fast forward to present day and the hero's mission in life is now to protect the world and spread love. On the movie Gremlins, they said that suicide rates during the holidays spike up because the stress of the holidays caused people to harm themselves. In comic book movies, the stress of the holidays doesn't cause villains to want to harm themselves, but they definitely want to harm other people. The villain in the movie is a shady businessman who posts these manipulative videos on TV so the whole world could see. The villain's superpowers is that he lies harder than Pinocchio. He claims to be one way in front of the camera, but he's a phony and when the cameras aren't rolling, he's the total opposite. On the outside, the hero looks okay, but on the inside, you could tell something's probably up. Every couple hours, the main character has a haunting flashback about the last action sequence from the last movie. There's no prescriptions for the PTSD, so the hero just has wine for breakfast, lunch, and dinner to ease the pain. One day, the bad guy visits the hero's job. He makes his way past security, mainly because the clothes he's wearing makes him fit the description of the type of person who would have an appointment. The lady doesn't fall for all his BS and asks him to politely exit the building. When he leaves, he leaves his contact information behind, so you could tell that this isn't the last time we'll see him. There's a side character who works for the hero. When the employee is off the clock, the worker has a part-time job of getting into danger. The worker is attacked and all hell breaks loose after that. An old flame visits the main character out of nowhere. The reunion serves as a distraction. While no one's paying attention, the entrepreneur has developed a method to give regular humans superpowers. Everything comes with the cost. Most of the people that get the powers have a nasty side effect like the symptoms you read on the labels on the back of medicine containers. The villain hires a team of soldiers as henchmen. When you add his army together with his new superpowers, he thinks he's ready to take over the world. The first country on his list is America. He finds a way to sneak past the United States Secret Service. After that, he gets a hold of the President of the United States and uses this to his advantage to negotiate a new contract that will make him the richest, most powerful man in the world. The hero's old flame dies, and the look on the main character's face proves he or she feels a certain type of way. The bad guy is a glory seeker and plans to bribe cast himself taking over the world on network television. They trace the location of the transmission and the hero skydives all the way to the coordinates. The henchmen are killed one by one and when it's time to take care of the stronger enemies, the hero summons the 24k gold suit to whoop them in style. If you want something enough, you do whatever you gotta do to get it. The bad guy was bullied and picked on when he was younger and since that's a stupid motivation for wanting to take over the world, that's probably the reason why he loses the fight. One by one, everyone the bad guy enhanced is changed back. The last one is the blonde lady he turned into a super soldier. She loses her powers, and everything is back to normal after that. Those are 24 reasons these movies are the same. You agree? Yes, no, maybe so? If not, politely share your thoughts in the comment section below, and click the subscribe button for more 24 reason videos. <gasps>